In this video, we're going to cover 3DO emulation on the PC version of RetroArch. I love the 3DO. It's probably one of my favorite niche failed systems, but the history behind it, the concept it was trying to employ, and just some of the games it got were just so interesting and cool that I just can't help but have a soft spot for the system, and I've loved it ever since I picked one up in 2016. That being said, emulating the system also comes with a number of perks over using original hardware, like higher resolutions and faster emulated CPU clock speeds to reduce slowdown. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to get it all set up using the upper core in the PC version of RetroArch. So let's dive in. So to get started with 3DO emulation on your PC, you need to install the PC version of RetroArch, whether that be the standalone version or the Steam version. If you have yet to set up RetroArch on your PC, links to these guides will be in the description below that you could follow along with. Get RetroArch set up, configured, and good to go to follow along with this tutorial. Now, the first required item for 3DO emulation is to acquire a 3DO BIOS file. If you want to do a lot of interesting modifications to your 3DO, you could dump it using the real system, or just resort to Google and search one up. I really don't care which way you go about doing it, but as always, this channel does not provide illegal download links, so Google will be your friend. But there are a number of different 3DO BIOS files to choose from. You only really need one, so you could get one from the Panasonic FZ1, FZ10, the Gold Stars, and then any other various system version. And then just a heads up for anyone hoping to play Japanese games, you are also going to need to source some 3DO font files, and they will be named as shown here. I don't own any Japanese games, so I'm not going to be covering this section specifically, but here's the information for you if you want to. You just need to acquire these three additional bin files and put them into your RetroArch system folder. But once you have your 3DO BIOS source, just make sure you have it named correctly. And then we just need to add it to our RetroArch system folder. So open up your RetroArch folder wherever you installed it. So for me, I put it on the desktop for demonstration purposes. Scroll down to the system folder. And then just drag it right on in. And there we go. That BIOS file is now ready to go. Next, you are going to need to source some 3DO games. If you happen to have a large physical collection of 3DO games, I do have a video on the channel showing you how to dump those using the PC version of RetroArch. So this will be in the description below if you are interested. Otherwise, you can resort to Google to once again find them. I, again, don't care how you go about doing it, just don't ask for illegal download links. But 3DO games can be in a variety of different formats. If you use RetroArch to rip them, they will be in BinQ format. If you use another program, you could get them in ISO, as you can see here. And you could also convert them all into CHUD format if you want to save on disk space. For my demonstration today, I'm just going to leave them in ISO format. But if you're interested in converting them over to CHUD from BinQ format, I'll have a link to the BAT file to do so. But once you have your game source, just store them anywhere on your hard drive. Doesn't really matter where they go. For me, I'm just going to put them in my RetroArch demonstration folder under Games. There we go. They're now ready to go. So once you have your BIOS file and games placed, just open up RetroArch and we are going to get the Opera Core downloaded. So RetroArch, here we go. And once it's loaded up, head into the online updater in the main menu, core downloader, press up on your keyboard or controller to head up to the 3DO company, and we're going to download 3DO Opera. And there we go. Once that core is finished downloading, we can begin loading up 3DO content. So one method of doing so is to head up to load content, navigate to the directory where your games are stored. Select a game, choose a core, and let it run. And as long as you have everything placed correctly, you should be greeted by the 3DO boot animation. And there we go, 3DO games now playing on our PC. So I'm not too big of a fan of that loading method personally, so what I like to do instead is make a games playlist, so that way I can have easy access to all of my games. So my favorite way of doing this on the PC version of RetroArch is to use the desktop menu. So you can click on this button here under the main menu or press F5 on your keyboard to bring it up. And once the desktop menu has loaded up, head over to the content browser here on the left, right click, new playlist, type in the 3DO company, space dash space, 3DO, and press enter. And now you'll be greeted by a new 3DO playlist entry here on the left, complete with a Panasonic FZ1 icon. 
So now in this main space here, right click, add folder, and then just navigate to the directory where you have your 3DO games stored. And select the folder. For the core, choose Opera. And database, choose 3DO Company 3DO and press OK. And now all of your 3DO games will be populating this playlist. There we go. So one of the great things about the RetroArch desktop menu is it will show you if you have a 3DO BIOS file being detected properly. You'll see it show up as green here on the right hand side. And if it's showing up as red, it means it's not finding it. So again, we only need the one 3DO BIOS file typically. So showing up green, so I'm good to go. And we already saw it boot up, so cool deal. But you can use it as a troubleshooting method if you try to load up a game and it doesn't work. You can load up the desktop menu, select a 3DO game from your playlist, and say, see if it's being detected. Now, if you want to pretty up your playlist a little bit, you can right-click on your 3DO playlist entry until it's download the entire playlist thumbnails. If your games are not named correctly, chances are it will fail every test, as you can see here. So typically, RetroArch is looking for the game name, followed by a region code. So if I put in the USA region code after Doom here, and then tell it to download the thumbnail, it'll typically find it. So in the cases, so in the cases where you can't find a box art by renaming the game because you just don't know what it's looking for in the internal database, I like to go to Game Facts and search up the game in question, head to the media section, boxes, and then just grab the box art for the game in question. So here we go, Street Fighter 2. Now I'm just going to move RetroArch out of the way real quick, and we can see that I have the box art here for Street Fighter 2 in JPEG format. Unfortunately, RetroArch's desktop menu doesn't work directly with JPEG files anymore. So just open up Paint, drag the box art in, and then just save it as a PNG picture. Don't need to rename it or anything, just save it as a PNG format picture. Now just get the game in question selected, and drag the PNG formatted picture into the box art section here, and it will be applied to the game. So there we go. So for my demonstration purposes, that's where I'm going to call it for this playlist, but you could go ahead and do that for all of your games if desired. But once you have your playlist done, just close out of the desktop menu, press F on your keyboard to make RetroArch full screen again. And to get our new playlist entry to show up on the left, just click on Restart RetroArch. Now over on the left, I have a new 3DO playlist entry down here with all of my games listed here, and then the ones that I put box art in are showing up over on the right, so very cool stuff. And then to play a game, all you need to do is select it and tell it to run. And there we go, 3DO games up and running on the PC version of RetroArch once again using our made playlist, so very cool stuff. But this being emulation, again, we are able to do so much more with 3DO emulation than what the standard system was capable of. So from this point on in the video, we're going to be covering the uh, advanced core options available to us within the Opera Core. So to access our RetroArch Quick Menu, you can press F1 on a keyboard or a guide button on a controller if you have one hooked up. And that brings us into the RetroArch Quick Menu. So from here, scroll down to Core Options. And our first option that we could choose is our 3DO BIOS file that we want to run games with. So if you have multiple BIOS files, you can choose it here. Our next option is to choose the font ROM. So this will be for those Japanese games. Next, we have a CPU overclock. So this will help you reduce slowdown in 3DO titles that just push the system to its absolute limits. So 1.0 is stock and you can increase this to a 2X overclock. So twice the system speed. And do be aware that this can cause some issues in certain titles, so if you have a game where it doesn't load up right with this set, you can just bring it back down to hopefully fix it. But just to show you real quick, here is Need for Speed running at that two times overclock. And you can see that the game is just running a heck of a lot smoother than it did before. Next up, we have the mode. So this lets you set the resolution. So you can choose between NTSC or PAL here. VDLP pixel format. So you can choose between RGB and XRGB. Next, we have VDLP bypass uh, color lookup table. So this can be faster for some cases, but it will result in inaccurate colors. So I like to leave this one off. And next, we have high-res cell rendering. So this is basically a 2x upscale for your 3DO game. So check out Need for Speed here with this option on and off. So off, on. You can see that the game is a lot smoother to look at. 
and then just once again off and on. So this is only useful for 3D titles, will have no effect on 2D titles. So cool option to set if you are into upscaling. Next up, we have the Madam Matrix Engine. This is set to hardware by default, and it should be okay to just leave it here, but there are some games where you're running it in software mode can result in a speed boost. You'll have to try it on a game-by-game -game basis, but overall hardware should be fine. Next up, we have Opera OS SWI HLE. You can turn this one on, see if it gives you a performance boost in some games. Otherwise, you could just leave it off. Threaded DSP, this is an experimental option, but it offloads the audio processing onto a separate thread to help performance. So if you're on a lower end PC, you can turn this one on, see if it helps you out. But it is experimental still, so it might cause some unexpected issues. So do be aware of that. So for me, I'm just gonna leave it off. Next up, NVRAM storage. So this is your save files. It's set to per game by default, so that way you don't have to worry about running out of save space. But if you want to share it, you can select shared here. Then you can select the NVRAM version. Next, active input devices. This is set to one by default because there's some bugs with the input stuff that happens. If you have more than one controller turned on, it could cause games to crash. So you're going to want to leave this on one unless you're specifically playing a multiplayer game. Then you will set the number of controllers for that game here. And finally, we have a selection of timing hacks to help certain games get to run. So Crash and Burn, Dino Park Tycoon, Microcosm, Alone in the Dark, and Samurai Showdown. And our last option is a debug output, so not really useful for most emulation projects unless you're doing homebrew development. And that's going to do it for our core options for the Opera Core. So as always, if there's options you want to set for some games but not others, you can head into Manage Core Options and save them as a Game Options file, so that way they only affect that game and not other 3DO games. So useful for things where you're going to be running the overclock mode as well as the high-res cell rendering. Next, let's talk about 3DO controls real quick because there are a number of different emulated controllers you can select for 3DO games. So if you head into your controls section, port one controls, under device type, you'll see 3DO joypad, flight sticks, mouse, light gun, arcade light gun, and trackball support. I don't have any games that can take advantage of any of these extra things, so I just stick with the 3DO joypad, but I just wanted to showcase the options here for anyone interested. And then you can manually remap controls as you see fit, as always. And if you decide to change any of your controls for certain games, after you set them, you can go up to manage remap files and save them as a game remap file, so that way they are just applied to that one game and not all of your 3DO games. And the last thing I want to discuss today is shaders. Using RetroArch's extensive shader library can really enhance the experience as you will. So head into shaders, you can disable or turn them on here. Make sure you've downloaded shaders from the online updater. Head into load and then you can begin loading up any that you like. So for me, I like to use CRT easy mode. I think it looks great on just about anything. Provides good grid lines, it provides good colors. Like, I just I just really like the shader personally. And that's, that's kind of the whole point. Shaders are personal preference. There's no such thing as the perfect shader. So just choose whichever ones you like and run with them. And once you find a shader that you enjoy, just head back into the shader tab, click on save, and save them as a core preset. So that way every time you load up that core, that is the shader that will greet you. And that's going to do it for our 3DO emulation coverage for today. As always, I hope this video helps you get your 3DO emulation project set up to your liking so you can enjoy this system on your PC. But here at the end of the video, I do have a couple of favors to ask. If you haven't done so already, please hit that like, dislike button, as well as that sub button and notification bell so you can see when new videos go live on the channel. I have loads always coming your way, and I'd love to have each and every one of you along for the ride. For anyone interested in further helping support the channel, you can also check out that join button here on YouTube or the Patreon link in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. A little goes a long way to keeping this place running and bringing all of this content directly to you. Big shout out to all of our current backers, you're amazing, you're champions, thank you so much. But until next time, my wonderful internet peeps, you all stay awesome, keep on gaming, and we'll see you back next video.